got the air conditioning. <laughs> Sorry. Hello and welcome to the MTV podcast. We're here live at Mac 2024 at the NEC in Birmingham. Um, first, this is day one. We're going to be live here every day from four o'clock in the afternoon, but we're also doing live streams throughout the week as well. Now, I'm pleased to say I've got a panel with me today of esteemed guests. Uh, first, we've got Chloe Reed from MTV CNC. Good to see you, Chloe. Got Joe Reynolds from MTV CNC too. And of course, James Fudge here from who else but the MTA, Hello. the organisers of uh, this fabulous uh, event, and that's where we're going to start. So, um, James, good to see you. Thank you very um, much. Thanks for everything you guys have put on here. It's great for industry here in the UK. Um, for those that maybe, this might be the first time they've tuned into one of our streams, could you just give us a quick overview of Mac as a show? Sure. So, I mean, we've actually been on site since last Monday. Um, we've been building uh, the show. We've got a lot of live working equipment. Uh, at the show and that really is our USP mm. you know most companies are bringing you know I think the most that someone's bought is 18 machines but most companies got two or three machines and they're all live demoing all in one place and this has to be the biggest gathering of our community anywhere mm. I mean we're expecting over the five days 30,000 people through the doors yeah um, I mean how many exhibitors are there just to give a flavour for so, the visitor that could come so there's just under 500 in total mm. um, and that literally is everything from um, additive manufacturing all the way through to software, be it I4, be it automation and robotics, and also a lot of the supply chain as well, because people aren't just rocking up looking for new equipment, but they're also looking at the capacity and capability of UK economy. Some of the kit that I've seen here today, um, you have one of the biggest machines that's ever been at Mac before here, uh, on the DTS stand, the yes, Toria yeah, machine, yeah. machine. They managed to get that installed here in something like four days. I mean, there must be a colossal amount of activity that happens here it's, in the uh, previous week. Yeah, I mean, the guys that do it are absolutely superb. We've worked with ILS for Mac for a number of years now, um, and their guys are super. I mean, we've got Versalive's cranage. We've got all sorts going on trying to get the show built. Um, but it's been amazingly quick, really smooth. Everyone's had their stuff installed safely, but really quickly as well. Mm. Um, and set up in what is really quite a short amount of time. So have any of these hauliers or lifters got as many muscles as the man sitting to the left of you? But does anyone? Leader, That's unlikely, <laughs> unlikely. <laughs> Joe, how many times, this, this, how many times have you been at Mac? 1996. You excited about one, the week? Albeit I was a little apprentice. But yeah, mm. I, I love Mac. I love Mac. It's everything that we preach, isn't it? All under one roof. I love it. And Chloe? I mean, this is a second. Is this the second time you've been here for MTD CNC? Yeah, isn't it? second time yes. I've been here for uh, MTD CNC, and I was here once previous. I think it was 2016, fresh apprentice uh, with my other employer as an apps engineer. Um, and just to see how far it's come from 2016, mm-hmm. what, it's not even 10 years, you know, it's, it's, it's massive, it's huge. And you'll be pleased to know you're going to see a lot more of Chloe on camera this week because you'll be doing some of the live streams that we do and also um, filming around. Now, uh, if you want to catch up on anything we've done on MTD CNC today, you can uh, visit our YouTube channel or LinkedIn or wherever you're watching this or, in fact, our website. Um, James, what's, what's been happening on day one? How's, how's good, how good have things been? So we've actually, I think this is one of the busiest Mondays we've had. I've not had the final figures yet, but there's certainly been more people through the door. We've had a lot of people turn up and register. So even though our pre-registrations were higher than the previous Mac, we've had even more people coming in. Um, we are about to launch our new report, which is the true impact of manufacturing. We did the report a few years ago, and this is the updated version. Um, so we're about to go and launch that now. Um, And that really looks at what impact manufacturing has on the UK economy, um, which is actually 23%. If you take into account everything that the economy brings in, and that's also 7.3 million jobs. So 23%, just explain that figure, just out. So in terms of GDP, in terms of, if you look at, you know, what these guys in this room do, you're probably talking a few percent. If you look at the knock-on effect of manufacturing, so anyone that's employed because of a result of manufacturing, it actually accounts for 23%. Um, so Oxford Economics have put this report together. Government have approved all the methodology. It's all, it's all signed off. We're not just making these figures up to make it sound good. <laughs> so this is going to be publicly available? Is something yeah, that we're so gonna... as I say, it's officially launched in about half an hour's time. Okay. Um, so this is a, a hot slight, off the press, then. A slight yeah, hot, hot off the, the press, press one. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's available on the MTA website if you want to have a look at that report. But really, it just shows the importance of what everyone here is doing and what we're doing as a sector. Um, what about from an education perspective? Talk to us about what you've got here. So we we launched a few years ago um, the Education Development Zone and the idea was that we brought student groups through 
they get paired up with an apprentice from one of the members or one of the exhibitors here and they get toured around the halls. So they get a real good day experience and it's kind of that peer-to-peer -peer learning. We've got nearly 4,000 registered over the next five days. I mean, we've had 800 odd through the doors today. It's been really busy. Um, they've got a special zone, so there's an education development zone that kind of explains a little bit about what's going on. Formula One in schools are there, and the University of Wolverhampton are there, World Skills are running competitions, and then they get a real good tour of the hall, as I say, and a chance to stop and look at all the different technology on show. Uh, I mean, Chloe, you're probably one of the youngest, well, you are the youngest on our panel. Um, you've been in manufacturing some time, you've been through the education system. When you come to a show like Mac, how important is it for youngsters? I to think be here. To be here, yes, 100%. And like my first Mac 2016 was as an apprentice. And until I walked through those doors, I did not know what to expect. And coming through those years, being able to have apprentices here, having sections for them. I grew up as an apprentice with my granddad's thinking that engineering was really dirty. You'd be stuck in a tool room and that's where you belong kind of thing. But coming through, especially... Fabrication, CNC milling, CNC turning, welding, uh, additive manufacturing coming more into the mix as well. It needs to be more approachable for students, and not just students, but for, for young children as well, to be, it be put in schools, STEM activities and things like that. And for Jane to talk about that at uh, MAC 2024 and how it's moving, it just makes engineer, engineering a more approachable career for, for not just children but for, and women as well to go into yeah. as a career. I think it's J interesting. James, don't get employing her. What a speech that was. I Sorry, I'm yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I'm like, we sound like that. Thank yeah. you. It wasn't written down. Or there's no auto <laughs> cure or no, anything no. like that. That's why I love Mac because it's available for everybody. Yeah. You see everybody from every walk of life. And I've seen sat here today parents come with their children and that is fantastic it's just a day off you probably missed the day of school but it is very educational it's not just going out to a show you see everything from different aspects of manufacturing it's not just a one tunnel vision it's the whole whole is, shebang is, is there a danger though maybe with the way technology is advancing that we some of the youngsters aren't using or learning the basic skills because i came through with you know, uh, yeah, turning on a, a conventional lathe, doing all, all the basics of, you know, fitting as well as, uh, you know, machining too. But I look at it and think to myself now, some of these machine tools are so advanced that are they taking kind of that element away? The iPad generation. Yeah. It's an interesting thought. And, and people say you need to be able to machine a part on a lathe in a mill. And I'll probably subscribe to that because I can do it. <laughs> but Badly. It, seen some of the <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't want me on the machine anymore. Yeah. But um, the way these machines, are, it's getting to a stage where you probably don't. You I don't think, like to say it, but it's probably I, you don't. See, I, you know? I think there are still some that use those practical skills. You know, they still have to learn the base principles. Yeah. yeah. And that's good. It's, it's, and it's I still yeah, 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 Before I could move on to CNC, I had to prove that I could get this part with intolerance mm -hmm. and at the same, at the speeds and feeds corrected. At the start, you were given the speed, speeds and feeds and the tooling. As you went through, you had to think about it about yourself. That's what engineering's about. I find engineering, engineers are always looking for a problem to solve. And that's why they come. They buy a machine because they've got a part that they need to solve. They need to make money from their customers. And I think a lot of um, machines nowadays as well have really good interactive com conversational software. But you still need, if you break that, you still need the clatter of the and the scare of the machine. Yeah, yeah, Gosh, yeah. when I crashed my first machine, I never did it again. Yeah, I yeah, never yeah, yeah. did it again. You have to scrap a part almost to understand. Scrap a machine, the maybe. Of, as well. Yeah, but, but that's that's the Decimal learning point. of it, isn't it? I yeah. The other thing as well is, so when you look around here, it's the different skills needed. Yeah. So if you start looking at AM, actually designing for additive manufacturing and 3D printing is really different. If you go down and look at the guys that are looking at the I4 type stuff, it's still utilising all these same skills, but there are actually some different skills we're going to need. And predominantly, they're going to come from that next generation of engineers coming through. You know, those that are a little bit more tech savvy that are using it. Mm. So it, it kind of all fits together, I yeah. think, as one big story. Yeah. And on that point you raised earlier about, you know, coming back over the years, the change in technology. Even, I think COVID really showed us that. We had that four-year gap between shows. 
and the leap in technology in those four years. But again, even walking around now compared to 2022, you're not just going to come back to the same show. Yeah. You're coming back to some real it's evolving, cutting edge. It's really the pun, <laughs> Still, of the still raining there. So. <laughs> um, if you have a question for James, uh, you can actually t- well, type it in whichever, wherever you're watching this, LinkedIn, YouTube or our website, and we'll, uh, we'll ask him while he's here live. He's only got about another few minutes with us, bear in mind. Um, James, the seminar program and stuff like that is quite an important part of what you're doing. It is, yeah. I mean, people come here, obviously, to see the latest technology, but we've got quite a lot. We've Our seminar program has got... Um, it's paired back now, so it's almost just keynote sessions. We've had some great addresses today. We had the government's chief technology advisor opening the session. Um, we've got uh, Jürgen Meyer later in the week. We've got Rhys Herbert, who is the Lloyd's chief economist, talking about the future of manufacturing in the UK. Um, as well as a whole host of other speakers running throughout the week. And, um, and what are you hearing from your members in terms of how the market conditions at the moment on the lead up to this? Again, being MTA, and this always sounds like I'm dodging the question, it's always going to be mixed because our members are across a number of verticals. Mm. Um, those that are across those verticals are saying they've got certain markets going um, better than others, as you'd expect. But at the moment, there's a real buzz. And I was saying earlier, you know, people put on social media, you know, looking forward to being there, and it's all very exciting. But as you walk around today and talk to people, everyone's smiling. Yeah, yeah. There is a real positive feel and a real buzz walking around the halls. And even during build-up, you know, that wasn't just, I'm here talking to customers, it was seeing each other. And people that haven't seen each other for two years. Yeah. And you can, you can sense that in the halls, I think. I love when you come into Mac, we come on the, on, the, on a Saturday, fortunately Stan was finished, but you walk in, it's like, oh, another Mac, and you walk, it's like walking into a football, like when you go in to watch a football match, as you start to see the pitch, you can't help but glow and, yeah, yeah. You, know, yeah. you know, and get excited for the, uh, for the week ahead. Well, bear in mind you're a Man United fan, yeah. so the, better, there's yeah. no excitement there. Coventry City on the end, Three some nil excitement win. Three these nil days. Win on next Sunday, yeah. Other than when you're playing Luton Town, of course, because then, <laughs> then things can change. Yeah. Um, James, there's also a, a big dinner happening this week, which we're... Um, you know, please and thank you for the invitation to attend that as well. No, no worries. We've got over 500 people coming to that, so it's the biggest dinner that the MTA have hosted since about 2016, 2017. So um, a celebration a of of not just the event but manufacturing in general. It's the whole industry. We're all gathered in one place. Why not go and celebrate that together in a, a bit more an informal setting? Now we've talked about all the good things, but there must be some challenges that go on with doing something like this, James. There must be some moments where you go, "Oh gosh, what?" I mean, you're always going to get. Give us the warts and all. Um, it, no, it is challenging. I mean, there's, there's the odd machine that, for example, might be turning up later than planned. Mm. Um, thankfully, I mean, the team that organised this are superb. You know, we can accommodate that, no problem. We go and visit all our major exhibitors pre-show with the electrics team, with the lifting team, and we plan everything. So we know the order of the lorries coming in, who's going in what day. Um, so, yeah, as I say, it's gone really smoothly. Well, that's me from day one, though. It's like, OK, you're in that corner over there somewhere. Yeah. You've got to come in. Like, inches matter, don't they? Yeah, well, apparently so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you, when you arrive and it's a completely blank floor and there's just some little almost chalk markings on the floor, yeah. it's just, um, yeah. Um, James, I believe that that announcement <laughs> is where you need to be. Is, so I'm gonna, I'm, we're going to let you go. Thank you very Guys, much for participating. Thank you so much. It's great to see you all. And, um, no perhaps worries. you can join us Thanks again. Perhaps yeah, yeah. you can join us again this week, James, on this podcast. Course, if anybody has to. got any uh, questions for you, they and there's can, also the knowledge hubs before you go, isn't there? That'd be great. Oh yeah, if you're coming to the show and you're <laughs> looking to find out about some of the latest technology, we've got knowledge hubs on robotics and automation, sustainability, data and AI, tooling, and additive manufacturing. They're a great places you can go, get impartial advice, and find out who at the show. There's lots of information there. Yeah. Great stuff, James. Thank you very much for joining us. No worries. Thank you both very thank much. You. Well done, mate. Both yeah. all of you. <laughs> Um, so on the MTD podcast, we're welcoming guests um, throughout this uh, next probably half an hour or so up until about five o'clock. If you haven't seen uh, any of our streams today, you can visit our YouTube channel or our LinkedIn page if you're watching for there or in fact Instagram and you'll be able to catch up or in fact our website too. Uh, we've been on Mill CNC today. We've been on the DTS stand. We've been with Hyma. We've been with Citizen. Uh, we, uh, we've been with who else have we been with guys off the top of your head? Um, I think you said them all, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. There's but quite a few, what, wasn't there? What I can tell you is that if you visit the website, you will, be able, you will be able to see. If you've got any questions throughout this stream, or in fact any stream that we produce, then you can um, put them down and we'll uh, try and get you, or in fact a shout out just to tell us that you're uh, watching. Um, we're joined by our second guest, uh, Kazra. Nice to see you. Yeah, you too, mate. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for joining us. Yeah, um, see, yeah. Introduce yourself to our audience and tell us a little bit about... Uh, what you're doing here at Mac? Yeah, so I'm Kasra, Kasra Meraki. I work for Feature UK, and uh, we're in the uh, machine tools industry for um, 
any anything uh, steel land construction. Um, so the company's been around for uh, over 90 years now. It's an Italian company, and uh, the UK subsidiary, it was opened in 2000. Uh, we've got over 30, 35 people on board now. How many machines would you have installed, do you think, in this market? Oh, yeah, hundreds. Hundreds, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, get, and give us a, an idea. We, we talk about fabrication sheet metal. What, what they would be producing? So uh, we've got uh, various types of machines, obviously. We've got... Uh, if you want to process any type of uh, steel beams, I beams, H beams, you know, so to put a building like this together, you need you need beams, you know. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we if you can... want it to stay up, you do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So uh, we can supply small machines for small fabricators, uh, where you've got like three or four, five fabricators and welders. Uh, with small machine, you can just uh, you know produce a. a a lower number of you know quantity of parts per day, but then we've got uh, big production lines that uh, you know um, customers that make hundreds and hundreds of uh, tons of steel, you know, hundreds of tons per day sometimes, you know. So we can supply very large production lines uh, to process those uh, structural parts. I mean, you've been involved in uh, machining as well as fabrication. I mean, when you look at those two markets, which is biggest and what are the main differences? So uh, I mean, I'm still. Uh, quite a bit of a newbie uh, in this uh, sort of uh, fabrication and, and construction market really uh, because I've joined re- uh, feature recently but uh, in the UK market I think they're both big big uh, you know industries at the moment uh, I mean manufacturing it's got its up and down, ups and downs uh, throughout the years but uh, Fabrication. I mean, you can see that there's a lot of uh, projects being built at the moment. Malls, shopping malls, schools, yeah. hospitals, bridges, roads. They all need steel, you yeah. know, and they all need steel to be processed. And I mean, if you look at... Sorry, Joe, you were going to... I'm just going to uh, tell us about some of the technologies. Like, there's, there's two or three of the techno- technologies I've seen over the years, but if, for our uh, viewers, you can just go into some of the projects that you... Uh, yeah, yeah, installed. absolutely, yeah. So we've got... Uh, we've got mainly two sections of, of uh, products so we've got uh, plate processing machines um, so we can do uh, oxygen cutting or we can do plasma cutting on them and we recently partnered up with a company an Italian company called Cotlight they've got actually a stand uh, here at Mac uh, that they can uh, they, they produce laser cutting machines uh, up to 50 kilowatts so they can cut uh, uh, mild steel up to 150 mil thick with laser um, they've got their beveling head technology as well yeah. um, and then uh, obviously our uh, feature machinery for uh, plate processing our flagship uh, is called Gemini uh, so it, it is, it's got milling capability as well as scribing, drilling and then you name it and then uh, flame cutting, that, plasma cutting that, that was takes one. me back to Germany, can you yeah. remember that machine? Yeah, well, it did all that, didn't it? If it I remember yeah. correctly, the machine. It's probably yeah. the same machine that we're talking about. Yeah. I'm just trying to think of what an application would need look that. like that would need it was all like of flame those. Flame cutting, milling, it was tapping, it was doing all sorts, all yeah, on the yeah, same yeah, machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, for example, for for a base plate, if you want to put a column up, you know, mm. you've got a base plate, and then you've got some holes, and then you've got some uh, areas that you need to do some welding on them. So, with the Gemini machine, you can uh, do the the cutting of it. And then you can put the holes in. You can do the tapping for the, the where the bolts are going to be connected. Yeah. And then obviously you can put the weld preps on it. And then you put your column or your beam. And then you either do the mill uh, the 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 welding or you know you bolt it down. I suppose it's a little bit like nowadays in the machining environment. You see machines that are capable of multitasking, doing lots of these different yeah. tasks. You're, yeah. You're trying to achieve the same goal. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, actually, we're launching a new machine here at Mac, which can do a lot of things. So it's got a big... And it's huge, here? Yeah, it's here, okay. actually. It's on... The, uh, yeah, it's it's for the first time here, actually. We're, we're re- revealing it here at Mac, and uh, it's quite a very... It's, it's a very capable machine, that is, because it can do all of your applications. I mean, drilling, milling, scribing, and it's got a big cutting disc, so we can do some, uh, you know, uh, cutting of the of the seal itself, where, and uh, we will be running it actually here. Where, at where can you be found? Uh, hall twenty, stand one eighty. And Chloe, have you ever seen any of these um, the machines these guys supply in no, action? No, no, no. I've heard. Did you about did you them. learn about that? You talk, we were talking about apprenticeships earlier. Yeah. Is that an area? When I was learning, I was moved into different shops to do different things. Yeah. So there was the fitting, there was the yeah, the sheet metal work. The, 
uh, even welding and stuff like that. Did you get involved in that too? So we did exactly the same. And bearing in mind, I did, oh, when did I do my... I started my when I was 18. It was either go into an apprenticeship or go to university. Um, and chose to do an apprenticeship. You couldn't get into university, no? I was actually going to go to the University of Portsmouth to study architecture, but we're here now. So um, it was too long of a course, should I say. Um, But 18 years of age, obviously younger, 16, if you don't go on to do your A-levels. Did your milling, turning, all on your manuals, welding I did, electric. So I can actually uh, plug a plug socket and my lights, but I'm not technically, you know, authorised to do that. But no, CNC... Um, CNC milling was the only thing that was really out there as an apprentice and that was god what 10 years ago and to see how much we were talking about technology earlier to see how much it's moved on I would have never ever have seen that when I was doing my apprenticeship so I would actually like to go back now as an apprentice and see whether this is in the curriculum or not because it should be if it's coming into technology and if it's coming to the forefront of industry uh, not ancestors, but the kids coming through, sorry, yeah. the, the system should be trained up for this future engineering. Well, we, we've heard about your skill sets and background. We haven't heard much about yours, Joe, but we'll Go come on, on to that. Kazra, where, 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 where's, where's your entry into this industry? What's your experience? Yeah, so, I mean, obviously, uh, study-wise, I studied mechanical engineering, um, and I've always been involved in uh, machine tools, especially in milling and drilling and uh, some, some turning as well. I started as an apprentice myself on the shop floor uh, for a couple of years, did actual manual turning. Uh, for the first six months, I wasn't really allowed to touch a machine. So, yeah, I was just like sweeping the floor and putting oh, some really? oil on the machine. Yeah, yeah. 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 But then, yeah, so learn the hard way. It takes six months to learn that. Does it? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I had a strict boss, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. he didn't want me you to. You must touch have done a very yeah. good job at it. it. Must have been well lubricated, maybe. Yeah, and yeah. the floors were clean. Yeah, yeah, very yeah. clean. Yeah, I yeah. tell you, yeah. But uh, yeah, then afterwards, I started a uh, sort of a sm- uh, startup business, and uh, we were doing uh, some metrology. Uh, so we had 3D scanners and CMM machines and that sort of thing, and then we got involved into manufacturing routers. Uh, for the woodworking industry and then we moved on to metalworking machinery so I did that for about eight nine years uh, manufacturing actually machine tools and then uh, obviously I moved to the UK and then uh, started to work in this industry the same thing basically that I've ever done Um, and what would you be saying to people that should be coming to see you this week what have uh Ficep got to show. So, uh, feature, we would say we're as. Uh, you call it Ficep. Am yeah, I yeah. making a mistake there by calling it Ficep? Yeah, well, it's, an, it's the it Italian. Well. Yeah, it's the Italian pronunciation of it. Yeah, okay. yeah. It's an Italian yeah. company, it's an Italian name. So, yeah, we are, we are a one stop shop for everything uh, construction and steel processing. So, we, uh, us, alongside our partners, uh, we can you know, completely equip a, a complete factory, a production line. Uh, with everything that you would need uh, to actually, you know, make these buildings like this. Yeah, good. Well, let's yeah. hope this one doesn't fall down. Yeah. But I'm sure it won't. Kadja, yeah. thank you very much for uh, joining us today. Thanks, yeah. Good to see you thank again. You. And just yeah. one yeah. last time, where can you be found? Uh, hole 20, stand 180. Good. Yeah, come and see us. Uh, we've got live demos throughout the day. So uh, the machine looks very impressive. Cool. Yeah. And uh, good, luck, good luck in your new role. Yeah. Yes, cheers. Appreciate it. Thanks, thank guys. you. Thanks, thank Kadja. Thanks. Give him a little bit of a round of applause. Um, does Jason want to come on to the... Um, He's in a very uh, depth in, in That was Kazra uh, from... Um, from Fice- he it's not Fice- it, Joe, it. what's it called? Hello. <laughs> Do you know, I can't remember. Fisep, is it? I, I think everyone calls them Fice. Yeah, we can't bleep this out. Sure. Uh, can't Jason. bleep this out. Yeah. yeah, we're live. live nice to see four. you. Hello, chaps. Uh, Hello, chapters. Hello. So we're live here uh, at uh, the NEC at Mac 2024. This is the MTD podcast. We're going to be doing this every day <laughs> from about 4.15. We're going to be welcoming guests from the show, not only exhibitors, but visitors as well. Now, uh, if you can visit this week, you should, because uh, there's going to be, or there is around 500 exhibitors here, whether it be machine tools, metrology, automation, software, uh, every aspect of manufacturing this show is well worth visiting but of course if you can't then you can watch uh, MTD CNC where we'll be on our YouTube channel LinkedIn on our website on Instagram you'll be able to follow all of our streams um, we've been on Mill CNC today we've been on Corea 
We've also been on Hymer, we've been on Citizen, tomorrow we're on Matsura, Soditech, so much happening throughout the week, so stay tuned to MTD CNC. Jason, I've kept you waiting long enough. <laughs> um, fine, I've been eating, great, good. Great, great to have you participating um, on our stand as well and, and on this podcast. Maybe for those that don't know and that haven't quite seen that um, <laughs> the very vehicle, small piece of uh, kit. vehicle that we have over there to my left, yep. um, tell us about Flag Projects. Uh, well, as you know, you've been with us for a year now, um, so I think you've learned pretty well what we do. Um, and uh, the installation side of the business is just amazing. But yeah, we're bringing new kit in and different types of equipment for uh, installing machinery just to make life easier, which is why we brought that today. Yeah, I mean, so so in essence, it's it's factory rem- it's factory moves. Um, yeah, yeah. You know. I mean, it's, it's solutions. We we was just talking about a, uh, a job that we're looking at for one of our customers that we've got to put in uh, into a, a beautiful environment uh, next door to the Royal Opera House, um, and uh, it's just coming out of an idea because obviously these buildings are very old. Nobody's got the lifting equipment to get in there, so we're we're basically designing a, a full lifting frame uh, out of a scaffolding system. So we have to lift twenty tons, take it through the centre of this. What are you moving in it? What are you putting in it? It's uh, it's a um, kind of like a not Pavarotti. No, but we're going to X-ray Pavarotti. It's like an X-ray machine that's basically to uh, to look at um, old musical equipment. So, right. Uh, okay. Yeah. It's quite wow, incredible okay. piece. So quite diverse. I mean, we're talking here clearly about machine tools oh, and stuff yeah, like yeah, that, yeah, but, yeah. but the, the business is far beyond just yeah, that. Yeah, we do everything. We work for Natural History Museum, so, uh, you know, when we're putting stuff in there, um, we do quite a lot of work for Nikon. Um, so, uh, you know, when they find a new artefact, um, if it's mummified, for argument's sake, then you can't, you don't want to open it up. That's because so you interesting. Drop it, you know? yeah. So, so basically, they're putting it in the machine, and then um, you can see a complete x-ray of what's inside the machinery, uh, inside the the, um, the mummified whatever it is. They, we've seen a monkey, we've seen um, like a couple of birds of prey, and all sorts of things. Really, yeah. It's the most incredible thing because it's so detailed wow. without opening the actual mummification. So, and then they put it in the exhibition with a picture taken from the X-ray machine right next to it, so you can see it. Well, well, Joe's asking earlier. He, we wanted me to ask because he didn't mm. dare ask himself. <laughs> By the way, I was asking whatever's for a coming friend. out of his mouth isn't true. <laughs> was asking, have you got something that's capable of lifting him out of the bath? Uh, yes, a, you have. Yes. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. That must. Yeah. We've got an MC100. It's fine. <laughs> it's got a good reach as well. <laughs> <laughs> you will probably need it. I should say. Um, Joe, you've seen a lot of what Fleg do. I mean, how important is m- machine removal around them? Well, you're not going to you're not going to have a machine tool without it, it, are you? So it's pretty pretty darn important, I would say. I must admit, I was a bit naive to it. In my head, you pick up a machine, you put on a lorry, you drive it somewhere, you drop it off, shake some hands, have a coffee, and you're done. But there's a lot more to it than that. But it's it's what I've learned since working with these guys. Uh, They're a fantastic company. It's, there's other players out there, isn't there? But when you look at the project management mm. side of what you're doing, I think that's what, I think that's what makes you different. Not just the fact you've got lorries and you can lift things up. It's the yeah. whole project, the whole cradle to grave type of thing. Yeah, I mean, that was the thing we always said to you guys. It's interesting because obviously you are in the industry for machine tools and um, it's basically always been a case of you turn up, you look at a new machine in a customer's place and you're videoing what they're doing and it's all great, but nobody ever asks, well, how do you get it in? Yeah. And there are quite a lot of people that do it, uh, you know, the installation side. But a lot of them are, you know, they've got a crane lorry, they've got some nice equipment, but they're not engineers. So we manufacture lifting equipment, we manufacture different types of, um, you know, slide ways to get machines in that you can't conventionally get stuff into. So we we find that, um, you know, that's where we start coming away from everybody else because uh, a lot of it is all designed in-house you know you've you've been to the offices you've met the guys Uh, it's all about having a meeting and coming up with a solution for the whole job Mm. yeah how about from your 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 olden days in terms of machine (laughs) removal (laughs) when you you had a real job she's so old (laughs) yeah when when, when, (laughs) sorry when you you had a real job when i had a real job well i used to deal with machine moves all the time but from being the we weren't an end user we were the machine, the tool, machine supply. tool supplier mm. Mm. putting it to the end user and I was talking to Jason actually and Mark last week mm. weren't we about yeah. it and I think people take it for granted so much mm. you think you just pick it up drop it off and away you go but there's so much involved in it mm. and the amount of skill set that the team have to use and confidence within their team yeah. uh, to be able to orchestrate mm. it together 
um, or, or sorry, surveys as well. Mm. Can you drop it on the ground? Mm. Is it going to be strong enough for an 18 ton machine to yeah. be dropped on the ground? And also with end users, if you're looking to fit a five axis multi pallet machine, is it going to fit? You can go to someone like Fleb Pro- Fleb- Fleg Project and give them all the machines that you have, your square meterage, and mm. we can you can puzzle it in, yeah, can't yeah, you, yeah, and absolutely. say, yeah, it's achievable. Yep. So it's not just picking up and dropping off a machine. It's mm. so much more than that, and it's more than an investment. It's a lifelong partnership, mm. I'd say. But the interesting thing is when a lot of the uh, customers that we work with, um, they'll have a team of guys that have figured out if they're going to move a factory. Yeah. Um, and it's great because it looks on paper, it's fantastic, and everything fits, and it's marvellous. But then when it comes to the actual scheduling, they're kind of like, yeah, so we just thought you'd go in the door and pick that machine up and then bring it over. And it's like, yeah, but that doesn't go at the back of the factory. So that's going to be in the way. So, you know, what you need is we need to basically start a bit like that, um, not the Jenga, I can't remember what that puzzle's called. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And it's like, you know, move this from here to here. So we end up sort of taking three or four machines out first, put them to the side so you can get to the back machines to bring them to put to the back of the factory. And they're sitting there, and they've done all this working out about how it's all going to fit, and, and they've got no the clue <laughs> how on earth it would yeah. actually work. So it's, it's our job to basically just highlight those kind of things and, and say, you know... And I suppose that, that, it's a bit that's of a... That's a really important, sorry, it's yeah. important point. You're not turning up with a few lorries and cranes. You no. must have days and days of work before oh, yeah, you yeah, even yeah. start the job. Yeah, I mean, mm. uh, we, we now have a project manager that um, we basically... Um, well, she used to. I used to work for her. She used to work for a company called Man and Hummel up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, she was basically she would bring us in. She was a project manager on site. So when they needed to move machines around to get new machines in or to move the production lines, she would give us a ring. We'd come and do the job for her. She loved how we did it, so she now works for us. So she does the project management. So if we get a job that's more than one machine and it's you know a scheduled um, installation. Um, we'll get a phone call from the customer we'll go and look at the job she'll come with us to start I'll walk around or one of my other uh, project guys um, we'll work out roughly what we think it's going to take to do the job but she will then manage that project so she will basically write the schedules down she'll suggest things for the customers they haven't sorted their electrics out no problem we'll do the electrics for them because we've got electrical mechanical engineers as well so she puts on them and then she writes their schedules for them and they pay yeah. for that service mm-hmm. because it's just like oh that's not my job we don't know what we're doing we, we make bits we don't move bits yeah, yeah. yeah that's I, do you true know what? I wish there was removal men within the kind of domestic order that, you know, yes you know, yeah. because yeah. you know every, if when you I move house which is not very often yeah, yeah, but when yeah. I do yeah. or when anything happens I'll always say to my wife I'll always say you know, we've got the people coming to pick all this stuff. Yeah. She'll say, well, you've got to empty the drawers. Yeah. Okay, no, I don't need to empty the drawers. Table, you've got sure. to take everything out of the cupboards. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, 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 they can do it. And they don't do that. You've got to, you, so I might as well do the whole thing. Absolutely. Because as far as I'm concerned, I want to ring someone up and say, do you know what, come up, stick it all in boxes. <laughs> put it all well, in. I, I wasn't want to go through your top drawer. <laughs> I think as well, if you don't know from the start the whole plan, if something goes wrong... Mm. Yeah. There's, there's something if you trail back and go through oh well maybe if we spotted that before yeah. it would have been we would have we would have avoided the situation yep. so for you to take it on as a whole project mm. and to have reoccurring customers and the customer go here you go yeah they know that they've got promise in you yeah, 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 yeah. it's great great testimonial. it's a convenience for me though all of everything that y- you do and mm. everything that all of us do it's all about convenience absolutely customers, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 less yeah. hassle um, more resp- less responsibility for me, i.e. Mm. customer, yeah. and more yeah, responsibility yeah. on you. Yeah. You must have had some funny moments over the years where <laughs> things have happened and stuff like that. Very Anything precious. that you can... And the machines that wouldn't fit through the door and get the roof off a building. Well, I mean, that does happen pretty regularly because um, you get companies where the salespeople get the sale, they don't care how it goes in, and you (laughs) turn up on site and it's like, yeah, yeah, it doesn't fit through the door sideways, lengthways, height-wise, it just doesn't fit. And uh, I think one of the, the... funniest ones we had was uh, Nikon uh, not Nikon um, who was the mobile Nokia Nokia and uh, they bought um, a machine and um, they'd neglected to mention that it's going into a lift and up onto the first floor and <laughs> oh the machine didn't gosh. fit but they but they had to have it in so we literally had to strip all of the guarding off the machine and get it down to the bare frame to get it into the lift to take it up onto the first floor and then take all the gear back in and rebuild it again wow 
Wow. But it's stuff like that actually, actually happens. It happens all the time. I, I had a, a company we used to work for. It's not in this industry. It's in uh, print finishing. And um, I, I learned my engineering trade because I've been doing this since I was 12. And um, I love my job. So yeah. I, uh, there, was a company called, there was a company called Muller Martini. And they're like amazing print finishing equipment. It sounds like alcoholic yogurts. It is. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, it's Muller spelled Martini. the same way. Yeah, yeah. And they, um, but we would regularly turn up on site with a brand new machine. And the salesman's neglected that they've actually given uh, a deposit or taken a, the old machine as a deposit. Oh, really? They haven't disc- decommissioned it. It's still running. Oh, my god. And gosh. I've turned up at 6 o'clock at night ready for the following morning for a night out. And I'm like, you still got a machine chap. So then I'd have to get all my gear out and I'd strip the whole machine on my own all through the night, yeah. take the machine out, put the new machine in, then bring the old machine away. Wow. And it happened very regularly. With cooling in, tooling in. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It, well, I, I mean, with the Muller stuff, it wasn't as bad, but it's glue. It's, it's like, um, because it yeah. does book binding. Yeah. So um, the, the hot glue that's still hot and I'm having to try and take <laughs> this thing out, you know, you've got to leave it Sounds for six like hours to cool show, down. It? Oh, it's a nightmare, but that's how you learn. Yeah, oh, yeah. And in. So how many uh, kind of move, removals or moves will you do in a year? Give us, I mean, you are every day. Uh, um, you know, is that- funnily enough, we did work it out, and we think we've, we, we roughly do around about 3,000 jobs a year. Oh, wow. So, okay. yeah, it's Great. quite... Um, but some of them are big. You know, one project might be 12 <laughs> weeks. Right. Um, so, oh, yeah, so it's, just, yeah, yeah. it's, it's quite a... It's quite a um, it, uh, on average, I'd say 3,000 a year, but we do a lot of single machinery delivery. So for yeah, Herco, yeah. it will be one machine delivered so, to site. So, so you can be doing a lot more than one a day? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and the trucks are designed. If you have three small machines, we would basically take three machines on one lorry. Yeah. But if it's for two different customers, we'd put one on the trailer, one on the lorry, so yeah. they're sheeted up and covered so that nobody knows what else is on the back of the trailer. Okay, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Because it's etiquette at the yeah, end of yeah, the day yeah, for the yeah. customer, you know. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah. You, you know, you can do multi drops. Um, it, it's we, it, it's quite funny actually, because uh, one of the funniest things I've always sort of likened ourselves is, is, uh, to is screw fix, because we've had people um, on the injection moulding side. There was a 720 machine for Arberg, which is about 19 ton, 20 ton, sat in stock in our warehouse and one of their customers their machine went down and they phoned him and said we need a machine and we delivered it the next day wow. so instead of buying a box of screws you're buying a, a 20 ton injection moulding yeah. machine yeah. delivered the, the next back day back of your Cavalier on the trailer yeah that's yeah. it yeah. yeah drag it up it was just it, you know they're, they're, it, it's it, it's all about diversity mm. and just making sure you can cover all options for people and uh, it sounds like you love what you do I do slightly you clearly got a, yeah. a great team here I have, yes. Lovely Very team. lucky. Uh, Flag Projects are on our stand this week. Um, they're part of our uh, yeah ex- exhibition stand here, so you can come and talk to them about mm. if uh, what Jason's talking about here. Jason, thank you very much for joining us. No problem. Podcast. Pleasure. And, uh, you're, you're just over there, so we're not going to... Oh, no, I'm not going far. the last time we've seen <laughs> you. Jason, thank you. Thanks, Jason. No worries, Cheers. Guys. And so, yeah, if you are watching and um, you do have any, uh, any questions... For um, for us, then you can put them on the channel that you're watching, whether it be YouTube, LinkedIn, or uh, or the website. Um, good day, day one, Joe. It's a great day. I always find with, with Mac that the show is the show is so big. You need to get your bear, you need to get your bearings. Day one for me is it's like oh that's where they are, that's where they are, and then I get into it the rest of the week almost. It's too uh, too big a show for, to come for one day, and people mm. watching should obviously come to the show. But do try and stop over. Do try and do that second day. But to me, yeah, there's, to me, it's more there's more fabrication. There's definitely a lot more you know AI stuff, a lot more software, a lot more education. So yeah, for me, it's been a great start to the week. How about you? Yeah, but it's good. But Monday's always a little bit tame, isn't it? You know, the, it, it just gen- generally is. I mean, you know, throughout the week, I'm sure it's going to get, certainly we're going to be doing this podcast every night and expect to see a lot more faces uh, here during the week. But for me, it's been great. I've been on the biggest stand that's here, the, the Mill Scene. It's unbelievable. Wow. Uh, the, the technical odyssey, as they call it, 16 uh, machine tools with automation and they have a real mix of uh, they've got everything from their three axis machines up to their uh, Zaya multi uh, multi processor or multi function machine as well as their SMX machines for multitasking so much to see on that stand I've also been on the stand with the biggest machine ever to be at Mac so um, plus others it's so, it's been a, so it's been a good day Chloe I know we're going to see a lot more of you on camera this week but you've been fantastic today on this podcast so Thank as you. always you as always and Joe you've we're probably going to see a lot more of you on camera, although we might not want to. But um, 
thank you for joining us. Thank you. Uh, and please keep tuned to MTD CNC. We'll be live again at 9.30 tomorrow morning from the Sodatech stand here at Mac. If you want to catch up on all the streams that we've done today, then you can do that on our YouTube channel, you can do that on our LinkedIn page, or you can do that on Instagram. Uh, and as I say, we'll be live all week. So if you can't make it to this show, although you should get here if you can, then you'll be able to uh, keep tuned to what's happening on MTD CNC. Uh, that's it for Monday's podcast. You can join us again here tomorrow at quarter past four, where we'll be doing the same again. We'll have a lot more guests tomorrow, Wednesday and Thursday. And then on Friday, we have a podcast during the day as well. Uh, so that's it from MTD live streams today. Thanks for watching. Uh, thanks, guys. Thank see you. Thank you, Paul. And we'll uh, see you all tomorrow. See you tomorrow.